What's good, you YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squid back in another video. I want to do another market watch for something that I think a lot of people are actually grazing past, but that's actually Edison format. So this format has been a really popular time wizard format, by and far the most popular, beating out Go Control, and it's really, really picking up steam in the late, latest uh, Yu-Gi-Oh craze. So the thing is, the cards in this format have already spiraled up in price, things like the original printings or like blinged out prints of staples in the metagame, for example, things like Raikou, uh, Super Air, Snowman Eater, Super Air, so on and so forth. But there's actually like a gold mine of other cards that you guys can still pick up for the format. It's definitely not too late. And I think a lot of people uh, aren't really tapping into the full potential of picking up potentially some of the OG printings of these cards that are played in some of the top decks in the Edison formats. Because the thing with Edison is that they actually just announced a Ultimate Time Wizard Showdown tournament that's happening at the WCQ in North America, which is basically like a, a giant card, I believe. If you win, you actually get a giant card, but it's actually a Swiss round tournament that's gonna be huge. I know there's at least 100 players probably signed up already, if not more. Some people are actually just flying in for the purpose of this tournament. They actually capped it out, if I'm not mistaken, already. So it's kind of crazy that this is actually happening. And this could actually lead to potentially a large premier event like a YCS, which is only Edison. And the minute that happens, where Edison's actually a competitive aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh! that's on the circuit besides side events, then all these cards are actually gonna go up so high in price. So the way I would recommend that you guys do this is go to edisonformat.com slash decks so you can kind of see what top decks are in the format right now. You can kind of get a sense of the cards that are being played. So you can just like scroll down, even just scrolling down here, I see a variety of decks and different cards. And it kind of requires some prior knowledge of like OG printings of cards, for example, things that are like, um, were only printed once in hollow, like uh, in the old style, like Shura, the the, the Blackwing. Uh, this had like a super rare printing and a tin or something, I think. I think these are all just great pickups. They're all really, really cheap. The other thing you can do is go to Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck slash card database, um, and then go to the Edison format. I'll leave a link below in the description so you guys can just click on this directly. But you can see all of the card pool that's actually legal only during Edison. And you can kind of just go through these cards, read the cards and see like which cards are half decent. And then from there, you can actually go to TC player and look up cards. For example, I was looking up Exploder Dragon. So I was able to find the original printing, which is the 2007. Uh, you, I don't think you can actually filter by release date and on TCG Player, unfortunately, but you can actually go to Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikia to look at the release date of the actual card, and you'll probably see here that the first printing of Exploder Dragon was actually in the uh, game promo, it was a 2007 World Championship game promo as a super rare, and this is actually really, really cheap. Like, look, guys, these are only a couple of bucks. Well, I guess they're already trickling up, but even like four or five bucks, I think it's decent, because this is just like a staple in dragon decks. So like, this is like, uh, dragons are a decent deck. I, I think like tier one or tier two in Edison. I I'm not really sure I don't play as much, but I know that these little, these little bling out cards are really good to pick up because people just like uh, getting these cards. Uh, people are gonna definitely start picking up the cards, especially in blinged out format. As soon as we get like bigger events for this, if we get like more ultimate time wizard side events or like uh, YCSs, these are definitely gonna go up in price. You can also look up traditional staples, things like in the uh, side deck and the extra deck. So I actually found uh, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror uh, is actually a card or Light Imprisoning Mirror as well. They're both played. So you can actually look up uh, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror and I believe there's actually a DT variant that is so on quote unquote the highest rarity uh, obviously you can get the ultra rare but people prefer the older printings so the dual terminal one is actually shatter foil rare and that's only a couple of bucks four or five bucks so these are all i think good pickups they could potentially go up to like 10 15 bucks if the format actually picks up and is uh supported on a premier uh circuit basis and there are also a lot of other cards that have already gone up in price obviously like the ultimate kaya super rare d prison so don't really look for those but uh, look for more cards that are obscure or cards that are still played in the format that are uh, have some uh, weight. For example, Skill Drain, like the ultimate Skill Drain is actually really cheap. And this is a card that's also playable in current format. So like, guys, there's not a better moment to pick up Skill Drain than now in the ultimate rare variant, which I believe should be the highest rarity because uh, only 30 bucks. Oh my gosh, you could probably pick these up for like 25 bucks um, at your local vendor or like at uh, Frankenstein's or uh, wherever you guys go to pick up cards because this is just like crazy. Even Facebook groups like this should be a good pickup right now. It's playable in Edison as well. And if people start buying it out, it's just going to go up in price as soon as like uh, people realize that these LTS ultis are so cheap right now. Wow, I just stock up on more of those. 
other cards that you guys can look at, um, you know, things like My Body is a Shield, that's like an obscure one as well. I know there's actually a DT printing for that too. So that's another good pickup. Yeah, you guys can definitely get My Body is a Shield. I know the DT one was decent. And this was also played in other formats as well. So it's always cool to have. Uh, obviously just looking at these, there's like the gold rares, which are mad ugly. This is probably the highest rares designated for this card. Four or five bucks. It, still like good pickups so you're already seeing like some buyouts i see here that there's not much left already but even just picking up like a playset for 15 is still good you never know these cards will definitely go up in price a couple of bucks as they're bought out these are never going to be reprinted in these same rarities again so it's a very very scarce card it's also in the old style printing which a lot of players prefer as opposed to the newer card frames which look a little bit more stylized and modern i mean even looking at this uh, tweet from jeff jones who was talking about in the 250th ycs the side events for edison which is 2010 time wizard April 2010 format, 100 events as opposed to the other ones, which had like 15, that was Go Control. So you can see the sheer popular, the popularity of Edison is just picking up more than ever. And as they support it more and more, all these cards are gonna get bought out. All these cards are gonna get a lot of more, uh, people are gonna want the original printings as opposed to uh, what they were reprinted in uh, newer hollows, right? So just picking up the OG rarities as you can uh, for a couple of bucks while they're cheap right now, I think is a great choice. Even like Flambo or Kiorza's, I know that one is uh, uh, also dual terminal, I believe. So this is only like a couple of cents. Guys, like these are some good pickups. Um, or is this a reprint actually? Maybe there's the uh, original one that's probably a little more in the original uh, dual terminal. Okay, this one's like a couple of bucks, but I still think it's decent for like a one of staple. You know, you're paying a couple of bucks for this OG printing that has not seen printing in forever. If these ever get like uh, bought out, like, they're just going to go up a lot in price as well. Uh, a couple of bucks is good to pick up. Things like Chimera Tech, Fortress Dragon as well. I'm not sure if that actually went up in price, but Fortress Dragon as the original Ultra Rare in the uh, Shonen Jump printing was really, really nice as well. So these are like 12 bucks. Uh, it's not bad to pick up either. I think in Near Mint or Lightly Played, if you can pick them up. Oh, they've already gone up to like 15. But this is like, you can get a Lightly Played for like 10 bucks. This is obviously the only Ultra Rare printing that was in the Shonen Jump Magazine promos that was printed at like over a decade ago. So these are really, really good just to have like a one or two of just because they are staples in the format as well. So like staples that are a couple of bucks or like 10, 15 bucks, you can just pick up because the minute that we actually do get like a popular event, like a major event for this, I think they'll all they're all gonna go up in price immediately. So guys, just like look at these deck lists, look at like uh, obscure cards that have not already been bought out. You can definitely find stuff. And then also like, if you have time, just go through like this list here, see what cards are like decently sided, uh, de decently playable potentially. There's still new decks waiting to be discovered in this format. I don't think it's solved by any means. So just picking up these cards and seeing which ones are good uh, is a good pickup now. So yeah, that's about all I had for the video. I think, let's check Phoenix Chain and see if this card has actually gone up in price for the ulti, which I believe is the maximum rarity printing. Ooh, it has already gone up a bit, 50 bucks. Eh, it's not bad. I mean, 40 bucks for this, if you guys have the budget, it's not bad either. I, I guess it's playable in Edison as well, but no one seemed to play it. <laughs> Interesting. But uh, yeah, that's all I had for the video. If you guys have any more cards or tips that you have for this uh, market watch in terms of Edison, definitely let us know in the comments below as well. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.